It has been 30 years since we've had fresh souls in the Dagmar house. We don't need to find the darkness here, Paul. It's everywhere. Like my whole family. Sam. And I am Cam. Now for our first review, we're going to be looking at um, the movie We Are Still Here. That's got director... Uh, Ted Gagan. And T Ted Gagan. Excellent performances from Barbara Crampton, Andrew Sensenig, uh, Larry Fessenden, and uh, Lisa Marie. All very uh, experienced actors, actually, with horror. Um, mm -hmm. Most of them, including the director, all being somewhat experienced and uh, low-budget low budget but um i think this movie is a gem yeah no it's definitely a, a, a for good sure. for I, I don't want to say for an indie film but for an indie film it's for really you, good yeah <laughs> um so we're what we've got in the plot here is a bit unique um we're looking at uh an elderly couple in a horror movie which is already kind of uncommon uh, uh -huh. middle-aged to elderly i suppose their son dies they move uh to a new house Mm -hmm. new beginnings um and then that's when freaky things start to happen in that house right of course we've got the standard new house kind of yes freaky there's a town. basement and everything mm -hmm. with freaky stuff going on down there right and seeing all this stuff they decide to do uh, invite their friends over uh larry fessenden and lisa marie and um who are mystics <laughs> well, well lisa summer. marie yeah. yeah is the mystic and so you know they're invited over and um yeah no, is, well it, it, it goes from there it's hard to say the whole it goes plot from there being, pretty uh, much without being too uh spoiler yes and of um, course you you know you have um the town acting pretty weird about it they have neighbors who visit and hint at strange things going on yeah so none house. of this is none of this is necessarily new territory for a movie so mm -hmm. basically where the movie shines is sort of it's um uh, it just in the way it's done it's great execution it, the, the the concepts aren't necessarily completely new but the execution is great um so i the, think the monster is also pretty pretty creative not anything that we haven't seen before, but... Stylistically. Yeah. They, they look good uh, stylistically. So the creatures look interesting. Um, the, the sort of overarching uh, creature that... Yeah, you'll understand what, what I mean, mean if you watch that, it. Yeah. That's what I mean. That concept that, is interesting. Yeah. So there's a couple of unique concepts. So there but... are a bit of... There, there are a bit of um, some cliches in there, mm -hmm. but the overall idea and everything is pretty unique mm -hmm. and it's what shines in this movie and of course it's also the acting mm -hmm. great performances from larry fessenden mm -hmm. uh including lisa marie everyone did a fantastic job even so the even good. yeah even um, characters on the side did very did very well the script was very well mm -hmm. written right. there were a few things that were like Oh come on! You know, of course. Those right. Sorts so we of had things, we had but... one section that was sort of a tongue in cheek. I guess it was a cliche. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, it... It, it, after watching it, look, just just look. I'm, I'm I'm so sorry. Here I I am with you, nice folks, no more than five minutes, and I'm already knee deep in devils. Uh, you take care of this old place. Uh, it needs a family. Thanks, Dave. It has been 30 years since we've had fresh souls in the Dagmar house. Right, so after seeing that, I was just like, what, what could really, you know? Okay, <laughs> but, but, souls, yeah. really, souls, could, you can't. 
it, it but was, it was purposely on purpose. done. It was know? on purpose, <laughs> and I guess it kind of flew over my head, which is why I was well. And by, it. <laughs> by the end of the movie, you can tell it's right. Yeah. right. <laughs> um, so we've got really good. Uh, we got really good acting. Uh, the cinematography was really good. Uh-huh. Um, it was kind of bringing in that 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 modern uh, horror cinematography where you've got um, things that are in and out of focus. Uh, with the monster kind of coming in from the out of focus areas, you know, places that you don't expect. Mm-hmm. Um, the the score really added to that, and you know, it wasn't the best score I've ever heard or anything, but it was well used um, to make you know dramatic tension in the scenes, and definitely just mainly uh, the technical execution of all the scenes was really mm-hmm. it was nicely done. Um, you know, the movie wasn't. An eyesore, I guess you'd say. Yeah, and the plot is somewhat predictable, but it's not. It, it's it's somewhat predictable, but it's still pretty unique in that um, that predictability still kind of works for it. When well, the I characters think. are kind of grounded, you know. Yeah, the characters yeah, are sure. well grounded. It yeah, makes sense. Sure. Their decisions aren't completely stupid, except for the electrician. Um, you know, I'm actually you know we'll actually show you the electrician. So uh, check. <laughs> Poor decisions here. Look at it. Okay, so aside from that um, <laughs> amazing decision-making process, where by, by a black man in a movie, no less. <laughs> yeah, it's usually the white people that are that are <laughs> staying behind. But okay, whatever. Uh, it's a rural community. That's the excuse. Um, <laughs> yes. Anyhow, uh, so let's see here. So we've got for for the movie's credit, we've got good acting, good direction. Good technical execution of movie uh, cin- uh, bleh, 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 cinematography and uh, <laughs> sound. <laughs> um, so we've got those four things working really well for it. Um, we've got a sort of unique uh, Lovecraftian influence on the story, which we'll go over in the in the spoiler section. Uh, I don't want to give too much away here. Um, so it's got a bit of that influence. So um, and the writing is decent too. So really. The core areas that you go to see a movie and enjoy it, they're good. It, it, it was well directed, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. So, what, what are we talking about in weaknesses, though? Weaknesses, I'd say, you know what, and, and, and it's great because I can't really think of any weaknesses with this film. It's for me. It's just like either you like it or you don't. But I I feel like one of the weaknesses that some people might complain mm-hmm. about is the fact that it's an indie film and the way it was shot. Some people might not like that style so much. It's not um, it's not a common style. It's kind of like the ba- the camera is basically just sitting in the house with the people. So you can kind of see the like it's not found footage, but it's like found footage meets cinema. I guess you could say. I'm not sure you know if I agree camera, with that consensus. You know how they, um, you can I obviously guess... tell the ca- it's like the camera. You can sometimes see the camera just peeking out at them, like it's right. So it's the style it, of, the, I mean. of like, the of the shot. Um, yeah, and you can tell it's and, low budget. Yeah, and the style is like found footage meets cinema because it's not exactly. It's almost found like you're not. Um, how do I put this? It's sort of. Like, um, in some movies, you have almost a god's eye of what's going on. Mm-hmm. You can see pretty much everything. In this movie, um, it's, it's you a can point sort of, of see what's going on. Yeah, yeah the, the camera is sort of uh, in your face, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to describe. Personally, for me, that's almost a plus because mm-hmm. um, the the, monster, the creatures that are in the house, um, they're just sort of there um, mm-hmm. in the background sometimes. Not doing anything. They're just kind of like, hey, kind of like a, an insidious, actually. Yeah. Which is one of my favorite things. You can see that ghost on the... The coat hanger yeah. in that movie. Uh, in this movie, so, sometimes they're just in the background. So I can yeah. see why some people don't like that. But. So so it's that and um, the the monsters that we see, mm-hmm. the monsters that we see in the film might be a bit um, disappointing. You think? 
a bit disappointing. They don't look very scary. They look like, it, it, from far away, it looks really scary. But when you see them up close, it kind of takes the scare away besides, you know, jump scares because right. they're normal people. They're not <laughs> like real monsters. Or but, so it looks like, anyway. Or, yeah. Uh, the finale of the movie definitely takes away from the, the, the scariness of the monsters. But uh -huh. that kind of all plays into the Lovecraftian aspect of the movie, mm -hmm. uh, which, I, once again, I can't get into right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you say Lovecraft, so... <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess that works. And then and okay. then the other thing I would say is and and this is something that I noticed just my opinion, the the script was a bit weak in a few scenes. It was just a tiny bit awkward, I think. Teenagers. It was the teenagers, it was uh the bar scene, you know, the interactions with um right, with each other, but um Besides that, I, that, those are the only weaknesses that I can think of, mm -hmm. and, and for the most part, I think the movie covers that up, which is why I couldn't really think of any weaknesses this right. time. Yeah. So it's still an overall yeah, it's, enjoyable experience. It, yeah, it's forgiving because of um, how good the movie is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess with that, um, unless there's anything else you've got, I think we'll go ahead and get to the, the final rating here for each of us. Of course, yes. Um, so overall, you know, taking into account the, the somewhat minimal weaknesses, um, you know, there's no accounting for taste, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but based on the movie's strengths and how much I enjoyed it, and you know, for this movie, I would have liked to see it in theaters. I wish I had. Mm -hmm. It is on Netflix. It's free, uh, basically. Uh, taking all that into account, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, basically, I'd say this is a movie that you should see if you're a fan of horror, um, mm -hmm. if you're a fan of indie horror, even if you're somewhat new to the genre. I feel like it's creative enough that um, it might not be the worst entry. Um, if you hate gore, you might not want to see it. But other than that, I, I, I think <laughs> it's worth seeing. Uh, my rating, I you know what, it was a 7, and it kind of changed for me because I was actually thinking about the overall uh, movie and everything and its weaknesses, and since I couldn't really think of anything, I'm kind of flipping in between 7 and 8 right now. Um, I guess I would go ahead and put a put a definition to this. It would be a 7.5. Really? <laughs> out of 10. Because <laughs> I don't want to quite give it an 8. But I also mm. don't want to give it a seven because it deserves more than that. So okay, the, the only thing I think really holding this film back was um, was just maybe the not the cinematography was just the um, a little bit of the script. The actors were all amazing, mm -hmm. and I think it was just the the cinema the cinematography for me, like. So I'm not how a can huge I explain this? fan of of the of the directing style, basically. No, no, no. I really like the directing style. It's what is it? <laughs> how can I describe this? It was the um. It wasn't the cinematography because I enjoyed that. Maybe it was just the. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can't put a word to it. Well, basically, you're just looking at everything overall, and you're just saying it's a great movie anyway. Yeah. So it, it's a good movie. I think it's worth a, I, I think it's worth a look for anyone that's interested. For sure. Um. So, okay. Well, I think that's it for that. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> thanks for watching the movie duo. Stick around after the uh, after this, and we'll get to some spoilers discussions. Spoilers. Yay! So um, if you haven't seen it, don't don't watch that. Don't don't be that guy. <laughs> okay. Join us next time. Spoilers discussion. Get out of here if you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> um, okay, so the main thing I wanted to cover here is sort of a theory I have. Um, the director has said in uh, interviews that he took uh, uh, Lovecraftian influence in his script. Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, one of the, the, the big things with Lovecraft is that you've got this unalterable, demigod-like um, force or creature, or interdimensional being, or thing that lives under the ocean, you know, uh, a la Cthulhu. 
um, that could basically just end humanity, or at least just has an impact on humanity. And uh, it's unchangeable. You can't beat it. There's Think no it. Yeah, it without a plucky group of children winning. Uh, it without a win ever. Um, and rarely do you ever see these monsters. Okay. So I'm going to show you two clips here. Um, I have this theory that um, this there's there's a creature that lives under the foundation of the house that's supported by what the characters say throughout the script. And see if you agree with me here. I'm pretty sure this creature lives under the foundations and um, we never actually see it in any form. So uh, take a look. What do you got over there? The old foundation needs to be replaced. Nothing back there? No. Okay, so what I showed you there was um, we've got him seeing the foundation and pointing it out that there's a hole in the foundation. And the second scene is from the, uh, the sort of scary, gory finale of the movie um, where you see some people being dragged under the floor and then uh, people dust being spat out of that hole in the foundation, which makes me think that basically the creatures, the, uh, the Dawson, isn't it? Dagson? B Dagmar. Dagmar, thank you. Dagmar. The Dagmar family is kind of like dragging the people down into the floor for the creature to eat. Mm -hmm. um, we can't see the creature. Um, I'd say it's further supported by the newspaper articles that say every 30 years sure. something is happening. For sure, obviously. And of course by the pestilence sort of beginning before the Dagmar family even really... Uh, mm -hmm. they, do, they, weren't, they weren't doing anything. And Dagmar himself through... Uh, uh, Fessenden? Right? Fessenden through Larry... Um, our actor Larry, he says, look, we didn't do anything. We were a good family. It wasn't our fault. The only reason the creatures are there are because um, because they love their home so much, basically, and because of their rage at the, at the village. Um, it doesn't really explain why they're still killing people for the village. I, maybe they're being sort of forced to, because um, the, the, our, our old uh, exposition man... Uh, kind of makes it sound like maybe they rose them for through a ritual or something. Maybe the creature is keeping them alive in the house. You know, mm -hmm. this is their house, and maybe that's in exchange for There's some sort of relationship there between the two. In exchange for keeping them there, they give them victims. Right. So, so tell they me what you think. Victims. Maybe I'm completely crazy here. Um, it's it's kind of hard to tell, but I like that. You know, it's uh -huh. it's a uh, it's it's interesting. It's it's one of the more I, unique yeah, things about yeah. the movie. Yeah, I, I would say for sure. I would say for sure your theory is heading in the right direction. Lovecraft, mm -hmm. of course. Um, when you mention Lovecraft, that idea is always going to be something. Mm -hmm. You know, and since the director himself said it, said it as well, I think that that's that theory is right on the money. Yeah, and if you didn't notice that the first time you watched it, go ahead and rewatch it, because it's kind of confusing. Um, uh -huh. In this movie, we're kind of jumping into a story that's already there, mm -hmm. uh, that we know nothing about. Um, and the villagers are basically just kind of bringing us up to date on the story, but they do it in a realistic way. Um, you have three basic conversations with our exposition guy. Um, I'll i.e. murderer at the end. Um, we have three conversations with him, uh, two with the family and one with the bartender, and they don't waste a whole lot of time on those, uh, going over things that they probably shouldn't go over normally uh, in, in real life, basically. You know, they don't spend paragraphs explaining things. So I definitely think that's... Um, you know, it, 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 it's interesting. It leaves, it makes it worth a rewatch, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, as far as any other spoilers go, things that we couldn't talk about in the in the review. You want to talk about that subtle little uh, <laughs> uh, monologue or short monologue for when the neighbors um, visited the family? For when the neighbors visited. Oh, oh the Fresh come on souls, section. yes. Fresh souls. Oh my god, please, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, reading some reviews and some uh, some of the interviews with the director, it's kind of obvious now he was being a little tongue-in-cheek with that. Mm -hmm. You know, he explains the horrible things and just, eh, well, we'll get up now. Let's yeah. go. 
I'd also like to point out a great, great job from Larry Fessenden. Right. Um, the possession scene. We showed you that in the in the little trailer that we made before the video. Yeah, yeah, that was so good. He did an amazing job, and you know what? The part was actually written specifically for it him. It was. It was so, a lot of the parts were written yeah, specifically for the actors, yeah. which worked. Yeah, really it did. Worked. It did work. Um, it, it looks like Ted. Uh, Ted really already knew what his vision was. It was mm -hmm. pretty great. Yeah, and Larry just, I mean, very good performance from that guy. Mm -hmm. He's hard not to like, and mm -hmm. uh, man, he does it possession really well. I'd like to see him get possessed more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he he just um, really stole the stole the scenes that he was in. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that that possession scene is probably one of my favorite possession scenes of all time now. Uh, par only to scenes like from The Exorcist, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, the, our, our classics, of course. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our devil possession things really can't hold a can't hold a hat to that. Just mm -hmm. just the the facial expressions and how casually it begins, mm -hmm. and then it manifests into him stabbing himself. Man, it was just a good scene, um, and it really brought home the story too. You know, yeah. and claiming this, we were good. We were good people. Yeah, you start to go, oh, yeah. Okay. Things that's start to come on. together. Yeah, that's what's going on. And I gotta say, the um, the, the sort of super violent uh, gore scene at the end, uh, the finale, man, that was that was that was intense. It's kind of over the top. It reminded me a bit of um, oh, what movie? Cabin in the Woods. It reminded me of Cabin in the Woods. How uh -huh. over the top that was. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I was wondering, like, how many of you are there in the house? There are only three, right? How are you killing, like, seven people at the same time? Uh, because why not? Because they're ghosts. Yes. It's a good, good, good ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, said, you said the monsters were kind of disappointing. I, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. I think, um, I know the fact that there were people, I guess, is a bit of a turnoff, maybe, instead of, like, demons from under the earth or something, but I don't mind that, um... Ghost, it's, it's and I just, thought their design was, I, I haven't seen a design like that before, with a sort of a burning creature um, ghost. It's just differences in opinion. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was, I was a bit uh, disappointed by them. I mean, I, I enjoyed but, the, and, the and whole I have crackling seen sounds as they stand up. Yeah. Oh, you have? Okay. The whole crackling as they stand, stood up. That was nice, The yes. way they were portrayed as, like, just watching them in the house without killing them, which makes a lot more That's, sense with the story now. Their actions are a lot scarier than how they look, I think. Do you think that maybe um, if they had had more budget, they'd be more interesting? Or do you think it's just by nature of what they are in the story? I think it's by nature of what they are. And, and then when you find out that they were actually victims, like the... The scariness is just taken away. Mm -hmm. I mean, the creature, the Lovecraftian creature for me mm -hmm. is the is what is really scary about this mm -hmm. movie. You sure. can't see it. You know, in, in my opinion, the minute that a scary movie like fully reveals what the creature looks like is the minute that it stops being super scary for right. me. Right, and that's why Predator worked really. Like, the movie, silly yeah, movies like that, Jaws. The, yeah, it's the fear of the unknown always, and once once the creature is revealed, it's like there, there's no more imagination to it because there are so many... They made the same mistake yeah. in uh, Lights Out. Same yeah. mistake in Lights Out. Yeah. As soon as they revealed her full figure in, uh, in under the UV light, I just... It, it, it was that, and it was the way, it, it was just the design of what the monster looked like. I think, in, in my opinion, the short film Lights Out, that monster was much scarier. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. And yeah. That's for another but, 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 yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the, that, that always stands. Once you reveal what the creature looks like, it's like, it's no longer, it's no longer scary. scary. All right, and they did that very early on. They did. They did that very early on. They did, on. but to be fair... To be fair, technically, the monster still hasn't ever been revealed. We don't really know what the monster looks like. It's true. The Lovecraftian Not monster. Really. That's what's supposed yeah. to scare you. Of course, you. it's more of a cerebral horror there anyway. So, you know, it's a bit... Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's a, it's a bit of a complex movie. I mean, it, it more complex than you would think looking at the surface of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, that's all the spoilers that I can think of. Luckily, it's not a huge spoiler-filled movie, and the spoilers that we discussed are kind of just, you know, they're there for the viewing. If you if you look at the movie, you'll see them, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah, but I, 
as I said, I, I think it's worth a watch. I mean, it's on Netflix. Most of you have Netflix. We all have Netflix now. It's like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's viral. Um, so I mean, watch it for free on Netflix. It's yeah. it's, it's a decent movie and very uh, enjoyable. And as I said, I I, I disagree on the on the on the creature <laughs> disappointment. We're thing. going to disagree. Yeah, on we're going to disagree things. on that. So um, you know, maybe some of you won't be disappointed with the creatures. I don't know. You already saw the movie, so you know if you were disappointed. Tell me, tell me. Were you disappointed with the creatures? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Is she fucking crazy? I think she might be crazy. No. Okay. I'm just a horror movie enthusiast. Enthusiast, yeah. And I have got yes. dragged into it a couple years ago. So. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. join us next time on Movie Duo.